But in terms of we're not talking about the defense right now, we're talking about Shadur Sanders, because I watched him over the summer and sometimes tell me what you think of this. Sometimes it's hard to get a feel for an FCS player who's on a team that's dominating, kicking the crap out of everyone else. And I couldn't really tell whether he was really good or just on a, a team with great players at Jackson State that that beat everyone they faced. And then, as you talked about briefly with Riley Leonard, the moment was certainly not too big for Shadur Sanders on the road at TCU. Threw for over 500 yards, set a school record with that. Threw four or five touchdowns. I think threw five touchdowns. And the only mistake he made, he underthrew his first deep ball by about a half a step. And then he ran out of bounds early, I think in the first half, uh, on a sack. That ended up being a sack. If he just thrown the ball away, it'd have been incompletion. And those are the type of things you can live with long term. You're not turning the ball over. You're not throwing the ball in, in the harm's way. You're consistently hitting your receiver's uh, in the face, so they have opportunities for yards after catch. And your deep ball, it, it looks like my guy Jeff Blake. I used to love talking about Jeff Blake because he was at ECU when I was growing up. And he he used to throw the deep ball, Rick, that was so high it would go out of the, the television screen, and then it would parachute down into the receiver's hand 60-something yards later. I had very few issues with the way that Shadur Sanders played. And if you're looking here, Debo, I'll put the graphic up on YouTube. 510 yards on Saturday for Shadur Sanders, school record. Um, the only other name I, n- I recognize is Coy Detmer down in 1996. He had 457. So what were your thoughts of Sanders? I didn't know if you had a chance to see him at Jackson State before. No, but just watching him, uh, and I agree with everything you said, the throws he made, accurate at all levels of the field, the athleticism, everything that, that you're talking about. But the one thing that really impressed me the most is, can you imagine having your dad is prime on the sideline and he named his son the starting quarterback before they even practiced in the spring. And to put all that added pressure onto that kid and to that kid to go out and perform the way he performed, I thought that was an amazing story and tells you what that kid is made of. And you talk about it factor and you think his dad has the it factor. I think this kid has just a big of it factor that his dad has because of all the added pressure that was put on him going into this game. Now, one of the things worth noting, and <laughs> our guy Danny Cannell got into it with the uh, Coach Prime on Twitter before the game, because Coach Prime had said something in a press conference about he had he wasn't a Florida State guy. He ended up graduating from HBCU. Obviously, we know him from Florida State. Danny, our guy who went to Florida State and was at the at the Florida State LSU game, which we'll talk about in a moment, said on Twitter, "This is basically this is disrespectful." Prime came back and whatever. Two old men sort of fighting on Twitter, which is something. But you may not like the fact that Dion is outspoken, but it's it's a weird sort of juxtaposition because he also there's uh, Colorado puts out clips on social media, and one of the clips they put out recently was that Shiloh, his son who plays sa- uh, safety number twenty four, number twenty one, excuse me, um, in practice he 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 had cursed about something before a play and. Coach Prime heard him and said, don't curse at practice. <laughs> so, you know, he flaps his gums a lot, Coach Prime does, maybe more than some people want. But he also has some rules. And you get the sense just watching Shador. I don't know him. I've never spoken with him. He feels like a kid that's quiet, humble. He's not out there raw raw it up and, and talking smack in people's faces, at least not where you can tell. He's just making plays and, and doing his job. Yeah. And like I said, it is from Colorado who, what, won one game last year? One game. Yeah. And now all of a sudden they're must see TV. And it's crazy. It, it's it's incredible. And the pressure those kids have on them because of the way Prime talks about them. Uh, but they embrace that. They don't run away from that. And that's what is fascinating to me is that all those kids at that age are embracing all the pressure that's put on them. And then they go out there and do what they did on national TV. And it um, sort of reinforces the idea that Coaching is actually pretty important, not necessarily X and O's. You can be Kyle Shanahan or Sean McVay, and that certainly helps. But on some level, it's football is not that complicated. And if you can make players, young, old, otherwise, believe that they can do things, turns out maybe they can do it. Yeah, no, I agree with you 100%. And that was on full display uh, uh, this, this weekend. And like I said, I loved the fact of all the bravado because it all was backed up. Backed up. TV. Now, if he would have flopped on his face, we would have been saying a lot of other different things. And But he went out there, he built the program up, he built the kids up, and then they lived up to those expectations that he put on them, which I give credit to him as the leader in that locker room for them to come and do that. Now, 
what's the encore? Because wow. of all that week one and going into TCU and the team that lost in the national championship game, now they got Nebraska coming in next week. What do you do to follow that up? Do you yeah, their schedule is tough. Or do you uh, continue to uh, rise to the challenge, as we like to say? They have Nebraska September 9th. In the end of September, it's Oregon, at Oregon, then USC. So we'll we'll find out pretty quickly where this team is. But, man, what, what a fun story. So coming into the season, I talked to some folks, and, and Shador was like late third, early fourth preliminarily on the sort of summer scouting, spring scouting board. What's changed? <laughs> wow, we performed. Now it's one, one, one sample size. One game. One sample size. You have to feel pretty good about the direction he's going. <laughs> yeah. Just with like Leonard Riley or Ryder Leonard, whatever the heck the quarterback name from Duke is that you fall in love with. So now yeah. the spotlight's on you. Now you grabbed everybody's attention. What do you do with the attention even on you and the microscope even on you? Uh, more than it was maybe before the season started. Because, look, he's not a running quarterback. That's not his game. But he is nimble inside and outside the pocket behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, he moves pretty well in the pocket. Sometimes he'll drift into pressure when he drops back. But these are easy fixes. You've talked about this before. His arm looks plenty good on television. Like, it's not a, a Quinn Ewers-type situation or a Riley Leonard-type situation. He can throw the football. And on tape, because I was taken back a little bit about some of the throws and the ball placement down the field. And – couple of those balls, deep balls he laid in over the shoulder. Uh, yeah. Those receivers uh, right there in the bread basket. Um, it, that that tells you that this kid has some something to him, not only physically and on the field, but what we talked about earlier, the it factor when the spotlight is on him. He, he seemed to thrive in that environment. So – I don't think I talked about this. Maybe I mentioned it last week. But my my uh, first official mock draft version 1.0 came out on Monday, Labor Day, and Shador and Riley weren't on there. But right now, the, the race for QB3 is wide open, like wide open. And I think Shador is the favorite right now for me. Now, <laughs> wait, let's, 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 let's hold the horse. There's a lot of the good. A lot. But I'm a just lot saying. Of quarterback if, play this week. If we're doing, do you remember the, the little mountaineering? Price is Right game where the mountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right now, Shadur is the is the little mountaineering guy that's highest up on the on the on the first leg of the the seventeen or whatever four month uh, race we got to do here. So great start. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, no, it's great because yeah. you can fall down the mountain just as quick. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we got to talk quickly. So I mean, this is a, a pop all day long. This is one of the best pops of the week for us, right? Oh, big pop. Now is a bigger pop his teammate. Number 12, I think Travis is number 12. Travis Hunter? Yeah, well, that he's ridiculous. He's not even eligible to talk about. But what he did, um, not only as a receiver and not only the incredible interception he oh made. Oh, my gosh. That, that was, interception, one of the best catches we'll see all season. Yeah, and then him playing that many snaps down in that heat, uh, he's, he's pretty unique. That's why he was the number one recruit coming out when uh, – Deion Sanders was able to get him to go to the Jackson State. Now, he got put up on a big stage, and he may even took a bigger step, even though we're not going to – he's not draft eligible, but he will be on everybody's radar. And if he continues to do what he did, uh, and you may think I'm crazy, but let's say he continues to go both ways, continues to have the production he did in week one, is he not the Heisman favorite? Oh, that's not crazy at all. I mean, what? And the other thing, this goes back to the our guy Danny Cannell and Coach Prime, little social media scuffle. Travis was going to Florida State, and then Dion got him to go to Jackson State. So maybe that's some of the heat that DK's feeling towards Coach Prime. But I would argue that Travis Hunter. And by the way, do you know how many plays he he was on the field for? It had to be over. A, I don't know the number, but it had to be over a hundred if you're playing that many. Hundred and ten in that heat. 87 degrees only, quote unquote, uh, in Dallas Fort Worth area. But I mean, on the field, it was probably a thousand degrees. And he was running, it wasn't like he was playing middle linebacker. He was running wind sprints on both sides of the, of the field because he was in coverage and running routes. I think he might be more valuable as a cornerback in terms of just thinking, whatever, five years down the road because they're harder to find. But maybe you still use him two ways wherever he ends up landing for the rest of his football career. 
Yeah, no. Uh, and I don't know if you can do that at the NFL level play both ways but if anyone is able to do it he sure is a candidate for it absolutely so another pop another fun watch and another name that i put on here the rookie dylan edwards uh the running back had four touchdowns and he was an absolute burner uh he took a couple short passes and you know padded should have stats no doubt about it uh by taking just a swing pass and, and just beating everyone to the house but um great win for colorado tcu like clemson has some things they got to figure out right quick and it might start with the quarterback, but I'm sure there's some other there's I think the thing with week one and our guy Chip Patterson at the cover three podcast talked about this last week. Week one to week two is when you see the biggest jumps in these college football programs because they don't have preseason. So maybe things get a little tighter, fewer mistakes for other teams as we um, go into week two. But that was certainly a fun start for Colorado. And they got to follow that up, as you mentioned, with a home game against Matt Rule and Nebraska. All right. Debo has a request. You got to give us your QB three. As we sit here on September 5th, 2023. Coming out of this weekend. If you're drafting a quarterback in the draft today and the top two guys, Caleb and Drake May, are gone, who are you taking? I can't take Drake May or Caleb Williams. You can't take them twice. <laughs> Just based off of this weekend. not uh, it, it can change next week, right? Yeah, Debo? of course. You're not locked in just for today. This might be uh, you know, a recurring check-in. Yeah. All right. I am going to go with Shadir Sanders. Whoa! <laughs> Love it. Coming out of this week, out of all the quarterbacks behind Drake May, I like the way Penix played. I like the way Florida State played. But and I would go – I like the way Penix played. Uh, but I would go with everything that was put on that kid's shoulders and all the hype and his dad being the head coach and his dad hyping him up. That really spoke volumes to me on what this kid is made of. So I would go with Sanders this week. Yeah, we'll talk in coming weeks about, uh, the, I mean, there's so many other guys on the list. Quinn Ewers out of Texas. By the way, Texas-Alabama's game will be hitting on next week, no matter what, I would imagine, because there are going to be dudes on both sides, including Quinn Ewers. Got up to a slow start against Rice, got a little better. Bo Nix at Oregon, he's going to face Shadur Sanders in a few weeks. We talked about that. So there's some players to talk about. Uh, but I, I love the Shadur Sanders uh, QB3 conversation, Rick. Thank you. Making things happen.